Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where Roger and I have returned for the Robert E. Howard Show. It is the Robert E. Howard Show once again. And today we're talking about comic books, Conan comic books, of course. Conan, whose popularity today is partly at least due to Conan's success in comic books. Roy Thomas brought Conan to Marvel Comics back in the 1970s, and it proved to be a tremendous success, and it boosted Robert E. Howard's popularity and the popularity of sword and sorcery fiction in general. Conan was already doing well at that time through the series of Lancer paperbacks that had come out in the late 60s, with the magnificent covers by Frank Frazetta. But Conan did really well for did really well in comic books. For years and years, uh, Conan was published by Marvel Comics into the mid-1990s. Eventually, Marvel gave up the license to Conan, and Conan was picked up by Dark Horse Comics in the early 2000s. And Dark Horse did a great job overall with Conan. Did some great stuff, Dark Horse did. There was a period right around their comic book that was titled Conan the Barbarian, where it wasn't so great. It was a little, in my opinion. That was the low point of the Dark Horse Conan for me. But it picked up after that. Once again, Dark Horse did some really good stuff. Then Marvel got the license back. I think a big part of the reason that Marvel got the license back is because Marvel wanted to reprint all of their issues of Conan and Savage Sword of Conan in big omnibus editions and sell those. And I'm really glad they did because I bought all of those omnibus editions and they're magnificent. But they also came out with a Conan comic book, two of them, in fact. They came out with Conan and they came out with a comic book called Savage Sword of Conan, which was not a black and white magazine like their older version of Savage Sword. And for me, Marvel's Conan, Marvel's new Conan, was kind of a mixed bag. Some of it was good, some of it was not so good. And they eventually lost the license once again. And Titan Comics, Titan Comics, picked up the Conan license through Heroic Signatures, I think it's called. And they brought out a new comic book, Conan the Barbarian. And I talked a little bit about this before in, on an Epic Comic Book Wednesday. I talked about this. This is Conan Bound in Black Stone, and this paperback collects the first four issues of Conan the Barbarian, and also the free comic book day issue that preceded it and acted as an introduction to the story in this volume. I mostly like this because overall this is really good. I think this story, which was written by Jim Zub and illustrated by Roberto De La Torre. This is really good overall, but I did have, I still had some concerns after I had read this. I had a lot of concerns before, and after I finished it up, I still had some concerns. Now the artwork in this is absolutely magnificent by De La Torre. Just great stuff. Of course, it looks very, very, very like John Buscema's Conan. That is, I'm sure, a deliberate choice. I mean, this is so much like John Buscema's Conan, it could be a little unnerving, like John Buscema came back from the dead and drew this comic. But he didn't. De La Torre drew it. And he, he did a magnificent job, I have to say. The artwork is just, just absolutely fantastic. Now, most of this comic book series, most of this initial story, Conan is fighting zombies. He's fighting zombies. In the free comic book day issue, uh, he, he does kill a bunch of regular people, but in the main series so far, up to issue four at least, he had been fighting zombies. And I had a concern. My concern was that we were going to be getting because of, and I always, I have this concern mainly because, you know, the the times in which we are living can be unfortunate as far as fictional 
representations of characters like Conan, because Conan is not a politically correct character at all. No, not Conan. And so I was worried that we were going to get a kinder, gentler Conan, a more watered down Conan. And I still had some of those concerns by the end of this initial storyline. Mostly, I think, because of his antagonists. We didn't, I wasn't really sure how Conan would be once Conan had, you know, gotten away from killing zombies in Samaria. Even though this was really good. In fact, issue number four is just a, a great issue of Conan. It's one of the best issues of Conan I'd ever read, actually. And so that should have that should have made me feel better. But when I got to issue number five, I realized, oh, I don't have to worry. This is not a kinder, gentler Conan at all. This is the real deal. So at this point, I have read every issue of Conan that Titan Comics has done. So I, I can give a better uh, overview of the series, in my opinion, so far, and how it how it conforms to what Robert E. Howard was doing in Ho Robert E. Howard's original stories. I read every issue up through issue seven, I think. I read them on my old tablet. This is an old, ancient, clunky tablet from Amazon. So it's not the best piece of machinery in the world, but comic books look great on it. I probably should get a new one. But like I said, comic books tend to look pretty great on this tablet. I'll pull up issue number six, or issue number five, actually. So this is issue number five, and this is how I read it. And the artist has changed. So in this comic, uh, the artwork is done by Doug Braithwaite, and he just does a great job. Uh, his, his artwork is fantastic. Uh, if you could take a look at that. I mean, this is just magnificent. Conan artwork. It's probably not as great as the Delatoria artwork in the preceding four issues, but it's still, it's pretty fantastic. And it's perfect for this story. And this is sort of a sequel to one of the greatest Conan stories written by Robert E. Howard, which was Queen of the Black Coast. This is kind of a sequel to that. Um, we get some scenes, rather grim scenes, from the end of that story at the beginning of this issue. And Conan is not feeling all that hot after having lo after he had lost Belit, who really was the love of his life and probably the only woman that he really was ever in love with. So it's understandable that Conan would be a little bit down in the dumps. But, you know, he, he, he's still up for adventure, Conan, and so he... he joins a team of thieves to, and they're hired to break into a temple and steal an artifact for which they will get piles of gold. And so they do. And one of my concerns, like I said, going into this is that we would get a kind of a watered down Conan. Well, that's absolutely not what we get in this story. This Conan is not watered down at all. So I'm happy to report that I, that I am very uh, satisfied with Titan's version of Conan so far. Issues five, six, and seven were great. They're great. And the character of Conan is, is done really, really well. And I e I'm going to eagerly look forward to every single issue uh, of Titan Comics Conan, if it can maintain this quality, which might be tough because these first few issues, the quality has been extraordinarily high. Uh, the artwork has been magnificent. It continues to be really good. I think what they're doing is they're probably doing four or five issue storylines. I suspect the story that I'm, I'm reading now is going to run about five issues and they'll switch artists after that probably. I kind of wish they wouldn't uh, because Braithwaite's really, really good. It'd be nice if they held on to him, but they'll probably switch artists after that. We'll see. And they'll probably continue to do like four or five issue story arcs 
which would be perfect for putting into trade paperbacks so they could sell the issues like this as books. Which is fine if they can maintain the stories at the quality that they're at now. They're really, really good. And like I said, I'm really, really happy with the Color Conan comic book so far. Uh, the last few issues have exceeded my expectations. Let's just put it that way. And I hope they continue to. And I, I suspect at this point that Conan is in safe hands. But there is another Conan publication that came out. Let's see if I can get to it on my incredibly slow tablet. And uh, that would be The Savage Sword of Conan. The Savage Sword of Conan, which is a black and white magazine based on the black and white magazine that came out in the 1970s for Marvel Comics, which was a more mature Conan comic book. Uh, Savage Sword of Conan was a legendary magazine, Conan, comic book magazine, with just some some of the best Conan comics that have ever been printed. And so, of course, I had my concerns. I was excited that this was coming, but I did have my concerns, of course. Again, I'm happy to report that this is really, really good. This is a really, really good magazine. It is not just a version of Savage Sword. It's not like what Marvel did, where they took the name Savage Sword of Conan and it was just a Conan comic book with the name Savage Sword. This is actually the Savage Sword of Conan. This is essentially the same magazine that Marvel was doing decades ago. So it is a spectacular return, I think, uh, for the Savage Sword of Conan. Really, really happy with this magazine. First of all, it has this incredible Joe Jusco cover. Joe Jusco is very, very busy nowadays. He's doing all of the covers for Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated's uh, line of Edgar Rice Burroughs books. He just finished Tar the Tarzan series where he did every single cover. And now he's going to be doing the Mars series. And he had time out to do this just fantastic Conan cover. I mean, that's just fantastic and wonderful and perfect. Uh, and you go into the story. So we start off with the Nemedian Chronicles. And right away, something stuck out. And that was when it says, no, O Prince. It says, no, O Prince. O is O-H here. Which it's not in the comic book. This is an error. It should be no O, capital O, Prince. And that's it. Not O-H. This was a mistake that Marvel Comics made during its entire line. They make the mistake here in Savage Sword of Conan, but they don't make that mistake in the regular color comic book. So that's interesting. Then we get an introduction by Roy Thomas, which is, you know, that's good. And he, he hints that he might be having some stories that he's going to be writing for Savage Sword. I really hope that's true. So we might see some Roy Thomas comics coming up in Savage Sword. Then we get a pinup from Della Torre, Unfortunately, this is the only artwork we get from Delatory in this issue, is this one pinup, but it's really, really good. Uh, we get the map of the Hyborian Age in black and white, because it's in the black and white magazine. And then we get to uh, the main storyline, uh, which is written by John Arcudi. Is it Arcudi? He's the writer. And the art is by Max von Fafner. And again, extraordinarily good. Look at that image of Conan. This is great. So of course I read this issue digitally because I wanted to, I, I couldn't wait for my print copy to come in. I had to read it right away. And I'm actually glad that I did read it this way. I watched a video this morning from McNulty's Book Corral, a great channel. I'll link his review of this down below because he reviewed Savage Sword. And apparently in the print edition, there was some problem with the grayscale when you, when they printed this story onto the newsprint because it's just like the old Savage Sword. It's a magazine printed on newsprint. But this is a digitally rendered image and it's very sharp and very dark. The artwork itself is pretty dark artwork. And so apparently there were some issues uh, when this was printed into magazine form and not all of the details, not all of the sharp lines and detail came out apparently in the uh, 
print edition of this, but it looks perfect when you read it on a tablet as I did. Uh, it's just, it just looks fantastic. And it is a great story. Really enjoy the story. Conan, you know, he's doing a very Conan thing in a very Conan way. The character is done perfectly, I think, in my opinion. And so this was a hell of a story. Uh, it's a shame that the print edition apparently had some difficulties uh, with the artwork. Um, <laughs> but it's great stuff when you read it on the tablet the way I did. Um, so yeah, so it opens with that great Conan, that great Conan story. I'm going to go ahead here to what comes next. This is kind of a long story, excuse me. There's probably a better way to do this. So another interesting thing is we get a short story by Jim Zub, who writes the color comic book. So he, he does a little short, short little Conan story, short story, and he actually does a really good job with this. More of this would be good. If Zub ever wants to do an actual Conan novel, that would be interesting. It would be interesting if he would do that. He does a hell of a good job. He does a hell of a good job on the short story. Then we get the cover again, but this time printed in black and white. And again, apparently this didn't turn out so well in the magazine print edition, I, uh, I am told. But it looks great here. And then something I was really, really, really happy to see, which is Solomon Kane. Solomon Kane comes in as a backup feature in this. And it just looks wonderful. It just... The, the artwork by Patrick Zercher, who did the story and art. It just looks great. It's, it's just great artwork. And so Solomon Kane is my favorite Robert E. Howard character uh, other than Conan. And I love Solomon Kane. And so it was wonderful to see Solomon Kane in comics once again, particularly since he looks so good. He looks so good in this story. This is apparently a two-part story, ended on a cliffhanger, eagerly anticipating the next issue. Um, but I have to say, I'm pretty impressed. I was pretty impressed with Savage Sword of Conan number one. Really happy with the last few issues of Conan the Barbarian, the original, the color comic book. So, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with what Titan's doing. Again, I just hope that they can maintain this quality uh, for the long run. I'm, I'm hoping Delatore comes back to do more art, artwork. That would be great. Um, hopefully Zeb will hang out for a while on the writing. Uh, so we'll see. But so far, so good. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.